Hello, I know it has been a long time since my last video, but work did interfere with hobby, sorry. And yes, I did promise a Mandelport video about full color graphics mode. And as you can see from the title screen, that is not what I'm going to talk about today. Instead, I will be talking about the Mr. 2 Mega 65 framework. The goal is to explain what it is and what it can do and what it won't do. So what are we talking about? Obviously, we are talking about the Mega 65, the new retro home computer system, which hopefully will be in the hand of the first 400 people shortly. But the Mega 65 is also a FPGA core, which enables the hardware to work as an enhanced C65 system with a bit backward compatibility to the C64. But it is not completely compatible and that has many reasons. For one, it does have a more advanced CPU, which will not work as the old 6502 did. But can we have a real C64 please? Or WIC20? Or Amiga? Or some other vintage Commodore or even non-Commodore home computer on this nice hardware? Well, actually all those platforms have already been converted to FPGA cores for other projects. For example, the Mr. project has a lot of them. So can we just load those cores on the Mega 65? It has an FPGA as the Mr. does, right? But let me first take a step back before I answer this. Because it might be best to first explain what the FPGA really is. In essence, it is a chip that can be changed. Normally a chip is fixed in what it can do, because all the circuits are hardwired in the silicon. The FPGA is different. It consists of many logical elements, flip-flops and memory cells, which can be connected and reconfigured by a programming bitstream. So the FPGA is not an emulation, because it really reassembles the circuits in hardware. There is no modern processor inside that will try to act like a vintage processor. The circuits and elements on the FPGA will behave like a real circuit down to timing and electrical levels. That brings us to the next logical conclusion. You can't run an FPGA core in an emulator like XEMU. Mainly because the whole emulation of electrical circuits is so complex that the computer can't really handle this in real time even for one megahertz CPU. Let's take a look at the Mega 65. It is a complete home computer system as you would have been able to buy in the good old days. It is in one case which has the keyboard and the floppy drive included and has various interfaces to the outside. Inside of it is a custom PCB with a Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA on it, as shown on the right side. It is the biggest of the series, which has 215,000 logical elements and around 13 million bits of RAM. And this is all. There is no hard processing system inside. HPS is what we call a fixed CPU, that is one you can't change, opposite to the FPGA, which can be changed. The interfaces include VGA, HDMI, IEC for external devices, internal and external SD card slots, DB9 for joystick and mouse, a custom keyboard with Petsky pet characters, a real 3.5 inch floppy drive and a cartridge slot. I think I skipped over some, but you can read up the whole list of specifications in the Mega 65 manual. The Mister, on the other hand, is no complete system in itself. It runs on the Terrasic DE10 Nano board, which is a development board for educational use, and has an Intel Cyclone 5 SOC on it. This Cyclone 5 system on a ship is not only a FPGA, it also has a dual-core ARM Cortex-A9 CPU on it. The FPGA itself has 110,000 logical elements and 5.5 million bits of RAM. On the interface side, the D10 board provides a USB OTG interface, USB FTDI programming interface, SD card slot, HDMI, mono audio jack, some onboard peripherals to test things, and an external connection header to add custom stuff. 
The complete list can be found online. You can use some cores with the DE10 Nano alone and perhaps an OTG OSB hub, but most of the time you will also buy a USB daughter board, an analog I.O. board, some extra fast RAM, perhaps a real-time clock. And you can get those in various forms, the classic stack, complete read to console systems like the MMS, or even boards with side connector pin compatible to arcade cabinets. Well, back to the question. So, can we just run the Mr. Course on the Mega 65? The short answer is no, sorry, you can't do that. But why? First, the Mr. does not only use an FPGA, it also has this on chip ARM CPU, which runs Linux and is used for various functions, for example, SD card access. It also has all those expansion boards and USB, but the Mega 65 had, has its own keyboard interface and various other ports that are not comparable to the Mr. expansions. FPGA wise, the Mega 65's Arctic 7 chip is, has more resources than the Cyclone 5 FPGA. So that is a good point. I think the title of the video already gave it away. There is a way. This way is called Mr. to Mega 65, which is a programming framework to develop Mega 65 cores or port already existing cores to the Mega 65 hardware. So it is not a Mr. Core player, which you simply run on your Mega 65 to play a Mr. Core. This is not possible. It is a base that provides a hardware abstraction for the Mega 65 system by providing VHDL components that allow for easy interfacing. This includes keyboard peripherals, HDMI output, audio processing and RAM interface. And it also includes a CPU which is called QNICE. This is the replacement for the ARM CPU of the MISTER system and provides on-screen display and SD card access. Mega 65 wise you could compare it to the hypervisor and freezer components. Let's try to visualize this. First, this does not aim to be a complete schematic of the two systems. It is only meant to show certain parts to understand how they differ between the two. On the left you can see the Mr. Cyclone 5 SOC with its FPGA part and the ARM CPU. Certain external functions are provided through the CPU. The bitstream of the core is programmed into the FPGA. This certainly has also direct external connections, which are not shown. On the right, the Arctic 7 FPGA of the Mega 65 is shown. In light orange, the Mr. to Mega 65 framework, which is part of the bitstream that is programmed into the FPGA. The rest might be circuits for the Mr. core that uses the M2M framework. The idea of the framework is that you should not need to change the Mr. core, but you only need to change the way the core is connected to the framework. That way, future changes of the Mr. core can easily be integrated in its Mega 65 port. This could actually result in improvements that could be ported back to the original Mr. Core. Who knows? Now you might say, where do I start? I want to port my favorite system. Good news! With the two Mr. Cores already ported and the third in progress, the Mr. to Mega 65 framework gets more and more well defined every day. But to really get going, you should be able to design a circuit in hardware description language. It might seem like programming, but there are certain constraints that you should know and keep in mind. So don't let yourself be discouraged. There are lots of resources and people out there that can jumpstart you. The documentation of the framework is currently a bit bare-born. But it will be updated soon so that all the various functions and interfaces are described. And there are also the existing cores for reference. And who knows, perhaps I will port some easy core and make videos about it. Tell me in the comments if this sounds interesting. So I did talk about two cores already available and a third one in development. If you follow us on Discord, you already know that this is the C64 core. 
and it has nearly reached a state that could be defined as alpha. So let's take a look. Okay. First we need to switch on the Mega 65, which will then come up in Mega 65 mode. Sorry for the shift of display. This is my really cheap VGA to HDMI converter. And uh, now I will put the C64 bitstream via M65 tool onto the Mega 65. And we will switch to the HDMI output of the C64 core, which also can do VGA output. And uh, let's load some nice demo to get a look. I have to load the um, disk via serial, serial console, so you did not see that. And later it will become um, a menu option, obviously. And port speed is standard for 1541. No Jiffy OS here. Jiffy DOS, sorry. And now I shut up and switch to the uh, output of the Mega 65.
So we won't flip the disk because this is four disks long. It's the uh, Comaland demo. So uh, just download it and uh, view it on your own system. Um, I will now load a different bitstream just to show something else. And um, uh, insert a game. And then we will see uh, a first preview of the um, on-screen display and while loading the game I can show you now what happens if I press the help button then a pop-up will appear and with this you then will be able to do things currently not much of it works only the um, Hertz uh, selection and the triple buffering um, but uh, later you will be able to change the disk in the drive or load a cartridge into the system or change the sit mode um, and various other stuff. Perhaps um, something like CRT emulation. I think uh, someone I know would like to have this. And then we are ready to run this nice little game. Uh, let me get rid of the menu. Oh, I could not write run while I was in the menu. Uh, so, and then we take our trusty Competition Pro joystick and let me get rid of the uh, keyboard and I will switch on music again. So, perhaps you know this game. It's a really nice title written by Shaland50k. And I think I'm not very good at it. But you can see it works. And oh, dying also works. So, yeah, as I said, I'm not really good at playing, only at dying. So let's conclude this short uh, demo of the C64 core with this, uh, yeah, multiple dying. <laughs> we have reached the end of this quick overview of the Mr. 2 Mega 65 framework created by M. Jürgen and Sai 2002, who also created the three Mr. core ports. If you still have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or join the Mega65 Discord, where you will get more or less direct feedback, depending on the time of day. Until next time, bye bye!